This video footage gives an insight into the hidden world inhabited by pilots starting out in the industry. New pilots, pilots until they're very senior in the system, are paid so little that they can't afford to live in the markets in which they have to fly. I represented a pilot once who had to fly out of Boston. He lived in Texas. He couldn't afford to get, a, get an apartment, so he lived you know, with his family in Texas and commuted. You know, when you're making $16,000 a year, um, you know, that's poverty level in the United States. Young pilots looking to build their hours often start at smaller regional airlines where the pay is initially very low. Some of these pilots commute long distances to work, so they need somewhere cheap to bed down for a few nights. Unable to afford a hotel room, some pilots stay in privately rented accommodation nicknamed crash pads and sleep in so-called hot beds. Hot beds do exist. I've known so several pilots who had to grow up through the ranks. So with the hot bunking, you know, one pilot gets up and goes to work and the other one crawls in the bed because they simply cannot afford a decent place to live. When I first started, I was making $18,000, $19,000 a year. Um, you know, and I made that right around there for a couple of years. I, I commuted uh, the entire time uh, that I flew for Colgan Air, uh, from Milwaukee all over the East Coast, uh, as well as Houston. This is a very similar neighborhood to um, many crash pad neighborhoods. It doesn't cost very much, uh, easy to get to and from the airport, and uh, just makes economic sense, bottom line. Usually not the greatest of neighborhoods, um, pretty unsafe. Uh, People coming and going at all hours of the day and night. This is footage taken inside a real crash pad, where pilots are packed into tiny rooms with bunk beds. There is little privacy, and getting a decent night's rest isn't easy. In a small, you know, one, two, even three bedroom apartment, you could have anywhere from eight to 20, six, eight, even in, in one bedroom. Not exactly a great place to get a good night's sleep. In 2011, the Federal Aviation Authority proposed new rules going into effect in January 2014, designed to combat fatigue by reducing pilots' duty hours from 16 to 14. They also made it mandatory for pilots to be allowed 10 hours of rest between shifts. But some campaigners think the new rules haven't gone far enough and don't substantially address the issue of commuting pilots. Sadly, many of the, in the industry, particularly the regional industry, have pushed back hard trying to, to weaken, delay, or kill these important safety initiatives because they are thought to be, by some, too burdensome or, or too costly. And I think that uh, that's just wrong. Economics and safety are linked. We need to do a much better job of having the economics of the industry reliably support this important profession in such a way that people can reliably get the rest that they need before every flight. Our passengers deserve it, our colleagues expect it, our profession demands it.